I'm JP Sears. Today I'd like to take a question from a viewer who, uh, whose name is Benham, originally from Morocco. And I love the question. It's really about how to follow your heart. And his question specifically is, how do you know you're listening to your heart, not your mind? I love the question. I'll keep my phone by me so I can be poisoned by the EMFs during this video, so I can be a martyr and a victim and feel sorry for myself. Back to the question, for me, if we don't know how to ask, am I listening to my heart or am I listening to my head, then we have a significant obstacle between living our authentic, deep, rich, meaningful, robust life versus us living a mundane life, serving an agenda that's probably been expired, fruitless, and lifeless. So, uh, I'd also like to share with you uh, a uh, short little statistic here uh, based on a company called HeartMath. Their estimations have it that the electromagnetic field of the heart, not the cell phone, but we're talking about like a life-generated electromagnetic field, Electromagnetic field of the heart is 5,000 times stronger than the electromagnetic field of the head. So that's one of the reasons why I think Benham's question is so relevant. How can we follow this life generator of ours that is 5,000 times stronger, maybe even 5,000 times wiser, maybe infinitely wiser, than this other life generator of ours. So let's dig in. In brief, here's my take based on my life experience of how I know I'm following my head, not my heart. Wait a minute, we're wanting to do the other way around. I think my head just said that. Now let me act like I'm speaking from my heart. <clears throat> how I know I'm following my heart, not my head, is it's a feeling. It's not a thinking, it's not a rationalization, it's a feeling. When I'm following my heart, I have two accompanying opposing feelings that are always present with the North Star of my heart. The feelings are a sense of freedom coupled with a sense of fear. If I recognize both, wow, okay, making this decision, well, is that my head or my heart? Well, let me notice what's there. If there's a feeling of freedom, expansiveness, as I go into this decision or even imagine this decision, that's my first clue. I'm working with my heart. Then the other feeling, is there fear there as well? Yes. That tells me, okay, I'm probably listening my heart here. Why would there be freedom and why would there be fear? It's a good question. That question's put my dog to sleep. But hopefully it's entertaining to you. I'm having fun with this question anyway, regardless. There would be freedom because anything that leads us into a more pure sense of authenticity for me, is us moving deeper into our life, our true authentic life. Is there anything else on planet Earth that can give you more freedom than permission to live your life, your meaning, your message, your truth? I, I don't think so. You could be shackled in handcuffs. Yet if you are living your authentic life, I think you are a free man. You are a free woman. So, that's maybe why we have a sense of freedom when we're following our heart. And why would there be fear accompanied by that? Well, I would dare say the heart takes us into territory that's always progressive. Could you pretend for a moment you, the human being that you are, your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual makeup, it is something that always wants to expand. You are the inhalation 
that has infinity as its limits. You're, all, you're intrinsically always wanting to inhale and expand. You are the flower that only wants to blossom wider and wider and wider beyond the limits of your imagination, beyond the limits mostly of your mind. So, as we are expanding into new territory, whether that's territory is an external situation, an emotional or a mental landscape, doesn't matter. As we expand into new territory, it's new. It's unfamiliar. Therefore, of course, it will be scary. It has to feel very risky when we're following our heart. So when we are making a decision in life, if we can't feel that risk, if we don't have a sense of fear about it, if we don't have that sense of freedom about it, there's a real good chance that we know we're not following our heart. We're following our mind. Speaking of our mind, no, I, I'm all for human beings having a mind. I think it's pretty important. I'm not about to amputate my head. Though I think if I amputated my head, it'd make my chest and shoulders look bigger, just relatively speaking. But what is the agenda of the mind? I love to know the limits of the mind so that I'm not as limited by my own mind. If we take a look at the agenda of the mind relative to the agenda of the heart, what's that look like? Well, through my delusional blue eyes, it looks like the mind is all about self-preservation the heart is about self-realization. That would tell us the mind wants everything to be safe. And for it to be safe, we need for it to be familiar. New territory, no. I don't know what to expect there. Therefore, it might not be safe. So the mind says, let's stick to the familiar. You've got a life decision. The mind says, let's stick to what's familiar. Let's repeat patterns of the past, says the mind. That is out for self-preservation. And in order for us to be truly alive in our life, rather than being uh, a zombie, being the walk of the living dead, then we're here to challenge ourselves to live our life out of self-realization, not self-preservation. The self-realization agenda of the heart is absolutely in contrast to the agenda of the mind. So Benham, with your important question, another aspect that we want to consider, well, am I following my mind or my heart? How do I know? Well, we can imagine, we absolutely know that both of them will be speaking to you. So it's never a matter of, okay, is my mind talking right now or is my heart talking right now? They're both always talking. The question is, which one am I listening to? And I think very seductively, maybe, our mind talks much louder. Our heart talks much softer. The chatter of our mind, the voices, the reasons, now you need to do this, keep it the same, or don't take that risk. That's very loud chatter. And in fact, silence can speak far louder than the chatter of the mind. The silent feeling language of the heart. If we learn to listen to it, we'll notice it. So realizing both are present. If you can actually acknowledge uh, from my experience, if you can acknowledge what the mind is telling you while simultaneously what you believe your heart is telling you, you're in a much more empowered position. You can see them both. Therefore, you can differentiate better. And therefore, you say, well, in this moment, if I want to listen to my heart, uh, I, I see what my mind's telling me and I see what my heart's telling me. So you can honor your heart perhaps a little bit better. Another uh, element that might clue us in that we're following our heart is have you had the experience where you're making a decision and you say, I don't know why, yet here's what I'm going to do. I don't know why, 
but I'm quitting my job. I don't know why, but I'm going to take this course. I don't know why, but I'm going to move. The feeling language of the heart, the North Star guidance, comes through the powerful language of our soul that Carl Jung called feelings. It doesn't come with thinking. It doesn't come with rationalizations. So when you can actually bump into an urge that you have, an inspiration to do something, go into a new landscape physically, emotionally, or mentally, and you have no reason why you're going to do that, In fact, maybe you have a hundred reasons why not to do that. That's telling you you're listening to your heart. That's my experience of it anyway. Our mind is great at creating rationalizations. I personally do not like to make decisions based on what I think. Yet my thinking, it's like the mind, it's like an internal lawyer. It creates these court case, ironclad arguments, why you should do this, why you shouldn't do that. Here's all the rationalizations. And if you don't follow these logical rationalizations, uh, you're stupid. And yes, uh, the lang- the fee- following the feeling guidance of the heart will be judged by the mind as stupid. In other words, it's not very intellectual. Listen to your rationalizations, your rationalizations. When it comes to our greatest good, what if our mind ultimately, when it comes to our greater good of self-realization, not self-preservation, the mind will tell us lots of lies packaged in ration, rationalizations. Something to think about. I, an example of my life that comes to mind for, let's see, uh, I've, for about seven years, I was teaching uh, holistic lifestyle courses for the Czech Institute, and it was really cool. You know, I, I would get to travel around the world, get paid to travel around the world, uh, talking about uh, lifestyle, health, uh, it, that was really cool. I mean, heck, helping people live their lives better, providing great education. And I was getting to meet amazing people, experience amazing cultures all around the world. And as several years ticked off the calendar, my heart and my mind started to have quite a bit of conflict. Uh, I started to feel the time is right for me to resign from the Czech Institute and move on. And my mind was feeding me all the rationalizations of why it was good for me to stay teaching for the Czech Institute exactly how it's been. And honestly, I violated the wisdom of my heart for at least a year and a half, maybe close to two years, where I'd have the urge, resign, JP, move forward in your life. No, I kept following my mind. Why? I was seduced by my own beliefs, my own rationalizations. And probably for me, the trickiest part, and I'm guessing in your lives, Uh, The trickiest part is the rationalizations that your mind creates that are in conflict with what your heart's telling you to do. The rationalizations, inconveniently enough, are oftentimes so true. They're, they're, They're such good opinions. What my mind was rationalizing is, JP, this is a good situation teaching for the Czech Institute. You know, it's a, a good company and, you know, it's just a great situation. You, what made my choice so hard is, that's true, it was a great situation. That's why it was so challenging for me to follow my heart. Finally, a couple of years uh, later, which at this point was maybe about a year and a half ago, I finally listened to my heart. 
And as I made that decision, as I even started to flirt with the decision, let alone making it, there I found that sense of expansion, freedom, and of course, fear. It's easy to leave a, a bad situation, but it, it for me was a lot of courage to follow my heart to leave a good situation. And I did it. And it was scary. And it was scary for a while. And now looking back as my fears have calmed down, uh, now I can have rationalizations why it was a great decision. What, but it was scarier at the time because I didn't have the rationalizations. I didn't know how my journey was going to unfold. All I knew was I'm walking off a cliff. I don't know where the bottom is. I don't know if it's a foot down, 100 feet down. I don't know if the bottom's made out of water, sharp, jagged rocks. I don't know. Now looking back, I can appreciate, wow, my freedom came because I was leaving a good situation into a deeper expression of my authenticity where now I'm able to devote a heck of a lot of more time, attention, effort to traveling around, teaching my own courses, leading my own workshops and retreats, which aren't better or worse than the Czech Institute programs. They are simply more authentically me. They're dancing in a realm that's more authentic to my work, which is the realm of the heart. And I also, I can rationalize now, yeah, it's actually been more not only personally satisfying and prof professionally growthful, and it's been more financially rewarding as well. And honestly, if I was here a couple years or a year and a half after I made my decision, even if I didn't have these rationalizations of, yeah, it was a good decision, I would still know it was a good decision because it felt right coming from my heart, if that makes sense to you. And before I let you off the hook of this beautiful question posed by Benham, how do I know if I'm following my head or following my heart? The last thing to consider is you'll never know for sure. For me in this huge, insightful question, certainty is nothing more than a seduction. When I am absolutely certain I'm following my heart, I want to question that. Where is that certainty made out of? Maybe the heart is functions in the language of curiosity, not certainty, and the mind functions in the language of certainty, not curiosity. So the more I'm certain, the more I actually want to question, is this a trick of my mind? But if you can be curious, if you can be the humble explorer of your life on your journey where you say, well, based on what I know, it feels like I'm following my heart. And I'm curious if that's true. Your job isn't to know for certain. That's what makes it actually a risk. But if you can recognize, I will never know for certain, that for me actually helps us follow the guidance of the heart a little bit more true. The humbleness of curiosity, for me, carries far more power than the arrogance of certainty. So thank you very much, Benham, for your question and all you for watching, for entertaining your version of this question. Uh, I know for me it's been enlightening to contemplate. And if you have questions that you'd like uh, to do the dance with uh, via me and my channel, by all means, shoot me your questions. You can post them to my Facebook page. You can comment below, and I'd love to hear what you have to say, what your questions of life are. And also, please feel free to like this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'm supposed to say one more thing. Probably share this video with your friends if your heart so tells you to.
Thanks for watching.